I'm Daniel Skuka. I'm the Senior Editor for Spacecraft Operations here at the European Space Agency, and today we are taking you on a tour inside the main control room to meet the ExoMars mission operations team working uh, here uh, on the ExoMars mission, uh, which has uh, uh, just been launched uh, today. Let's do a quick walkthrough into the main control room. This is actually an old tradition here at ESA where uh, on the various doors of the uh, main control room, <clears throat> there's just one here, but on the door around the other side, we've got uh, quite a few of the other teams who actually uh, post notices to the uh, newly launched uh, mission that we're going into a restricted area. Let's see what, uh, let's make sure that the uh, security badge works. And I think it does. Okay, <clears throat> we're walking through the main control room here at uh, ESOC in Darmstadt, Germany. What you're seeing is uh, the mission control team, uh, an actual team of teams, which right now are working very hard on the ExoMars mission. The next big milestone that we're waiting for is confirmation of the fourth burn, which should be coming in a couple hours from now. And after that, the really big news will be receipt of signals, the AOS, acquisition of signal from, uh, from space. <laughs> hey, Sylvia! <laughs> Let me see if I can do a, uh, a selfie here with, uh, with Sylvia. We'll just swing around. Will she fit? Yes, she will. This is Sylvia Sangerji. She is the Deputy Spacecraft Operations Manager working on ExoMars. How's it going? Hi everybody, it's going uh, okay. It's a uh, tense uh, waiting to the first acquisition. Finally tonight we are getting some news from the Russian. They sounds good news, but uh, we want to see the signal tonight. <laughs> good stuff. Now tell me, what are some of the things you're doing today as the Deputy Spacecraft Operations Manager? Okay, uh, here in the main control room I'm responsible for the front rows. So you can see it's all the guys uh, sitting here. We have um, several engineers. Every engineer is responsible for one uh, subsystem, um, one uh, spacecraft subsystem, and uh, we are the first line to the spacecraft. So when the signal arrives, we are the first one uh, checking the, the data of the, the spacecraft, and also we are the one commanding, uh, sending the commands to change operational mode or to achieve uh, what achieved by the spacecraft. So. Sylvia, tell us a little bit about some of the training you, you guys have done. Now, I think you've had something like more than 20 pretty intensive training sessions to, to actually simulate getting ready for today's, today's launch. That's correct, yes. So we have the SIM officer, so there are uh, experts on... Uh, Those are SIM officer? <laughs> <laughs> on the simulator, so we have the software that simulates the spacecraft data and mm -hmm. they can uh, set it up uh, to have a nominal uh, mm -hmm. scenario, so mm -hmm. just to let us see how the things will go the, in nominal operation, but also they can inject a lot of values, so they can uh, see how we react, and this is of course from the technical point of view, but it's a lot of training also from the psychological point of view and from the team working point of view, because you get uh, people coming, uh, uh, in ESOC itself already we are coming from several countries, so where, where, where are you from? I'm from Italy. <laughs> okay. I think you can hear from the accent. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and okay, we have a uh, different language, different culture. And uh, here we have to take um, critical, very critical and time, uh, uh, in a short time decision. Mm -hmm. And where everybody has to uh, participate with this piece of information. And then we have to put together the information and, and react on it. And this needs a lot, uh, a lot of training. Right, right. And, oh, and then also we have the support from uh, industry uh, for the LEOP, that's such a critical phase. Uh, uh, they are sitting in a room here, but also there the communication has to be built with the training. Okay, now Sylvia, the critical question that we all want to ask you, have you seen the movie The Martian? <laughs> Of course, I've seen the Martian. Uh, we, we went all together. It was a big, uh, <laughs> a big uh, team building actually event for the full team. We were waiting for it for a few months, and then we finally went. Uh, we booked the full room at the. At the <laughs> oh, that's we cool. It all together. 
Good stuff. Okay, well, listen, we'll let you get back to your uh, your work here today. And, of course, today, just to confirm, it's not a simulation anymore. This is the real thing, isn't it? I know. Yes, it feels, it feels real. So. <laughs> it feels real. Okay, yeah. good luck and best wishes for, uh, for a smooth AOS. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ready to carry on over here. And uh, <coughs> Sylvia was just mentioning about our simulations. And uh, yes. we'll just chat with uh, Jamie here for a minute. Jamie, you have been deeply involved in the simulations. Indeed, you were actually the controlling the, the, you, you were the Sims, Sims officer. What are some of the evil things you do to the team to get them to oh. be able to react quickly? My goodness. Well, there's lots of things that you can do. Uh, not receiving first AOS, for instance, is one of them. Uh, not deploying the solar arrays, another one. I mean, there's lots, lots and lots of evilness that we come up with. We pride ourselves in being quite creative in that regard. But yeah, we could, but we also go to things like doing fake fire alarms. Uh, we take key people out of the, uh, out of the MCR at key moments. So it's, uh, it's good fun. Hey, they, I have to say, the team took it in good spirit, and they've allowed me to join them today. Because obviously, running all those simulations, we got pretty handy using the simulator itself. So in case we need to do any last-minute tests during the Leop itself. Uh, we're on hand to set these tests up for them and help them in any way that we can. So, yeah. Right. But if it all goes well, hopefully I just sit back and uh, enjoy the food. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. We'll now, could you give us a, a, a ranking on a scale of, say, 1 to 10? How ready is this team to actually go to space today? The team is at an 11. And, uh, unfortunately, there's <laughs> no way back now. We're, we're launched, so we have to see what comes. At the moment, it's pretty tense because we have to wait for this fourth burn to occur, and then we have to wait for the first acquisition of signal. That's when we can take control and uh, can rectify any problems that we might see. But as I say, hopefully it will go smoothly. I'm sure, hopefully the training was worse than, than reality. Than reality. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Good. Good. Great. OK, we'll just move along here to the uh, front row a little bit. And uh, here's Jake. Jake, have you got a minute? Jake, can I, can I jump in? Yeah. This is uh, Jacob. Now, Jake, actually, you're a kind of a transplant, right? You, uh, you normally work on the uh, Rosetta mission team. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. I fully transitioned over now. So. Okay, but you're going to now you're working on on Exmoor for that's a while. True. Jake, could you give us a, a sort of an indication? Of what is some of the information you guys see here? Now, of course, we're not in, in contact with the spacecraft right now, but uh, what what will you see later on? Certainly. So um, we have multiple <coughs> displays that we can use. Um, one of kind of the typical ones is these ones that list just a bunch of data with a bunch of times. So here we can see specific uh, telemetry items, so information items. You know, is this unit off? Is it on? Um, what current do we have? What voltage? And then we have also a few nicer things. Um, we can make plots, uh, like this one here, for example. Um, and we can monitor pressure trends or temperatures or um, where the spacecraft is pointing and how it's deviating. Um, and then maybe lastly, we have plots like this, which um, highlight in color things that go wrong right away. So you can see a lot of red there, but it's expected for uh, the last time we had the spacecraft. Um, so we have a lot of tools like this that help us visualize. Now, Jake, you are responsible for uh, AOCS, Attitude and uh, Orbit Control Systems. As soon as we have AOS, and as soon as we have contact with the spacecraft, what are some of the critical points you're going to be looking at first? OK, so it's actually kind of fun on the AOCS side, because we get to do a lot of things in that first shift. Um, so we get the spacecraft in kind of like a safe spin where it's uh, rotating and making sure that the arrays are getting illuminated. Um, and so the first thing we want to do is, okay, after checking everything out, we want to switch on our star trackers, which are cameras that look at the stars, and based on which stars they see, they figure out where we're pointing. Um, once we do that, we can actually transition to a more stable, controlled mode where we're not spinning anymore. Um, and from there on in, we can do a number of other checks. Eventually, the goal is to switch on our reaction wheels, so we're not controlling using thrusters anymore, but uh, using our reaction wheels. Um, and once that happens, we can go to an even more stable mode, and that's the end goal from the AOCS side. Jake, thank you very much for taking some time to share with us today, and best thank wishes you. for a smooth, smooth AOS. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, we're just going to carry on over here and see if we can talk with... Some of our colleagues on the ground operations team, and I think we've got uh, Daniel Fear. Daniel, have you got a minute? Hi, yeah, <laughs> good, good, uh, good first name. <clears throat> Let's see if we could. Uh, thank you very much. Make ourselves comfortable here now. <clears throat> this is Daniel Fear. He is working on the ground operations team. Daniel, could you give us an overview, very roughly, as, as to what you guys do here in this particular set of, of consoles? Yeah, for sure. 
So from this set of console, the role of the OM is basically to control all the ground segments, which is, let's say, all the things that are between the spacecraft and the flight control team working on all those consoles that you see everywhere. That includes the comms line and that includes also the, all the ground stations. Now, as I understand it, you've got a pretty critical job today. It's, it's, it's you guys here in these consoles. You actually see the first signal that comes from ExoMars when we get AOS acquisition of signal. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's always a good privilege for the UNs because we are the first one to, to catch the signal, hopefully. And today it's a bit of a special event because um, this launch uh, we have seen already six hours ago and we have another nearly six hours to wait until first AOS, which is quite abnormal. Normally we have separation and AOS within the first hour. So it's a quite relaxed uh, environment at the moment, but it will certainly not be in five hours from now. Right. Now, Daniel, give us a quick rundown. What happens if your ground station doesn't see the signal? What, what are some of the immediate actions you can take to, uh, to handle that? Well, no, we first go to the nominal case. If the launcher behaves perfectly nominally, we have separation from the launcher. Oh, here we go. We have separation <laughs> and the spacecraft is exactly at the place where we expect it. Which means that from the ground station, we will point our antenna to the place where the spacecraft is supposed to be and catch the signal immediately. If this has not taken place as expected and the spacecraft is a little bit outside of the antenna beam, then we have a first, um, our first approach is very simple. We have those big antennas and on the first acquisition antennas that we use, like in Malindi or Mas Palomas in Kourou today, we have also a very small beam attached to the main one and that small antenna has a very wide beam. So, and that very wide beam covers a much bigger part of the sky. And with a launcher like the Proton here, we should be able to catch the signal immediately within the large beam of the small antenna. If this is not enough, if we're really, really in a, in a contingency scenario, then we can go one step further and start searching. So this is a kind of spiral pattern that we do across the sky with the small and the big antennas to try to find where the spacecraft signal is. Good stuff. And it's basically, it's, it's your team here, it's uh, sitting at these consoles, who are responsible for making all this happen a little bit later on today. Yes, for sure. Except the very first one station, which is Malindi, this station is actually an ESA antenna, but operated by uh, Italian Space Agency on their territory in Kenya. Mm -hmm. This is local operation from there. All the other ground stations that we will be using today are direct controlled by the OM team from this console here. Good stuff, Daniel. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck with, uh, with AOS. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, we'll come on over here and we'll do one final, one final quick chat. We'll just see if the flight director has a moment free, and we'll just wait. He's. Uh, I don't want to jump right in and uh, interrupt when uh, when he's chatting. And we're sitting here at the flight, the flight operation director's uh, console, and this is pretty much the the main control center where where everything happens. Everything is visible. All the data, all the information coming from the from the satellite and all the systems on uh, on ground. I'll just switch the camera so you can see what uh, what we're looking at. Oops. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> no problem, no problem. And uh, Deputy Flight Director, Misha Schmidt, uh, do you have a minute? That's sure. the key question. Could you chat with us a little bit about what's going on with the mission right now? Uh, what is going on with the mission right now? We have done our part uh, when we were following the launch preparations while the spacecraft was still on top of the rocket mm -hmm. in Baikonur. Um, mm -hmm. We had left off a couple of hours ago and what we do now is uh, we follow actually what uh, the control team of the Russian launcher is reporting to us. We don't have any visibility, we're on their hands and uh, in predefined uh, uh, times they inform us about uh, the performance of the upper stage. And the upper stage has uh, a couple of burns which actually spiral us into a final trajectory towards Mars. So all we can do now is waiting until the time, uh, uh, the predefined time is over and we get our acquisition of signal from the spacecraft. You, you make it sound very, very simple. I suspect it's not quite as simple as you, as you make it sound. Uh, how long has the training been going on to get ready for today? For spacecraft operations, so the training, the training is, uh, um, uh, it's difficult to answer because there's a training period, actually the team is being trained on the console 
with uh, uh, procedures, with, with the simulator, with the mission control system all in place already, and everything falls to, together. Yeah, the puzzle pieces of the puzzle fall together to build a, a whole picture. Uh, and this is an intensive training period, which starts typically three to four months before the launch. And we start with a nominal scenario, we have the spacecraft, everything is going okay, there's still enough things to be clarified. And then the, the simulations officer, which are the masters of the ceremony for the training, uh, get more and more nastier. So they actually in, in, inject failures and things like that. So that is, that is the story since three or four months. And, uh, but basically, the learning of how the spacecraft behaves, what the spacecraft is, continues or starts much earlier for the team. And so typically, if you work as a spacecraft operation engineer for a mission, you start maybe four years, three years uh, before wow. launch, <coughs> and you follow the process while the spacecraft is being integrated and while being developed, being manufactured. And uh, typically what we do here uh, for planetary missions, the mission here is planetary missions, of course we go to Mars, right? Uh, but also for astronomy missions, these are prototypes. Yeah? So it's not like you jump from one mission to the other, it's exactly the same. Yeah? We have standardized as much as possible the, the, the onboard uh, functionality, but also the on-ground functionality. So we don't start from scratch all the time. So we have a kernel. Yeah, for a control uh, uh, software, a satellite control software. But you have to build your stuff around, which is dedicated and typical for this prototype. And for most of the cases, it's just this one prototype is launched. Yeah? Right. And it's very specialized. Right. Final question. For you personally, what was the most interesting aspect of getting ready for the XMARS launch today? The most interesting aspect, uh, which is uh, the waiting period now, that is something which is not very, let's say, um, uh, we don't do very often. So typically, you have a launch of a spacecraft, which is either a direct injection or a uh, uh, injection into a, a orbit around the Earth. You have liftoff, and uh, 20 minutes after liftoff, you get acquisition of signal. And today is special. Uh, we have this waiting period of more than 10 hours. We actually uh, uh, we are waiting, and we are in the hands of the of the of the people who control the upper stage, of the spree's upper stage of the proton. And this is for me something we don't have too often. This is something new for me. That's something special, <coughs> which makes this day a little bit special. But for me, it's also special that for me, it's the first time I'm on a planetary mission. I'm going to Mars. So this is also an interesting aspect I never had before. Misha, thank you very much and good luck with going to Mars and good luck with the smooth AOS acquisition of signal in just a few hours from now. Thank you very much. Thanks. <coughs> okay, we'll switch the, switch the camera around and we'll just uh, finish doing our, our walk through the, the main control room here. I think you've seen pretty much all the all the positions and seeing what uh, most of the guys and gals are doing here. We'll uh, finish up with a, with a final sweep over the, uh, the main control room. And uh, that's pretty much it from, from us today. Uh, thank you very much for watching our Periscope and uh, we'll make sure this one's av available in Twitter for, uh, for replay afterwards. And uh, please do follow us via Twitter and look for uh, the restart of the web uh, broadcast, the live stream which will be uh, this evening, and you can actually follow live the uh, uh, AOS uh, right from uh, the European Space Agency's Mission Control Center in Darmstadt, Germany.